Hey, Dr. Reinhardt here, and today I've got uh, a message for you that's been on my heart for a while, and it's, what I call it is the crisis formula. So a mentor of mine a while ago here made a comment to me and, and explained this to me, and, and it, was, it was profound, and it really had a, a big impact on my life, and it's really changed the way that I look at life and prepare myself for future things. I just wanted to share that with you. The gist of it is we have a profound ability to impact what in our life is a crisis and what is not. And furthermore, we have a profound impact to, to a profound ability to impact our health based on what we think and how we think. So as far as crisis goes, a great way of defining a crisis is unmet expectations. So when we have expectations that are set and they're not met at some level, that's going to induce or create some level of crisis. So a beautiful thing about that is we can control what our expectations are. Now, a lot of people have never given this thought and they just go through life just kind of making expectations on autopilot. And that's what I did for a majority of my life. Um, and then, you know, some people will give you the advice of, oh, you know, if, you're, if your expectations aren't being met, just try to lower them, you know, just have more realistic expectations, things like that. That didn't work for me. If you know me, I'm a driver and me consciously putting effort into lowering my expectations it's kind of more like just depressing my enjoyment in life or my outlook on life and just and it takes energy to constantly be coming into something and lowering my expectations of what this meal is going to be like what this movie what this vacation is going to be like whatever it may be so instead i tried to kind of flip that on its head and what has really worked for me is to declare what my non-expectations are or what I'm not expecting to happen. So here's an example for you that, I mean, some of us, we're all in a crisis right now, but uh, maybe, maybe a more clear, or a clear example would be, um, take a, a woman in Sub-Sahara Africa who has a stillborn child and loses the child. Now that is a crisis, okay? I and mean, I'm not downplaying that. And the point of me saying this isn't about the, the preciousness of life, that is a crisis. Now you take a woman here in Edina or Bloomington or New Hope and have that same scenario where they have a stillborn child and they lose that child, that is probably perceived as a whole different level of crisis. Why? Well, coming into pregnancy, the woman in Sub-Saharan Africa or anywhere else in the world, maybe just some third world country, chances are they have experienced a friend, a loved one, or maybe themselves have already had a stillborn child or experienced death in a much more real and personal way. Now, the person here in Minneapolis, let's say, a lot of us haven't had death that close to us and we haven't experienced that. So coming into pregnancy, those two women are coming in with a different set of expectations. The one in the third world country is saying, hey, this is a part of life that very well could happen. Even subconsciously, she's aware of that because she's experienced that. Now, the one here in Minneapolis, different story. It's, I'm, I'm in the United States, like that doesn't happen. Like, so just coming into that, the exact same event happened, but the, the perception and the level of crisis was different. Now, just to kind of, you know, just to, that's just an analogy to explain how this can, can be applied. We all are sharing a crisis at some level right now with a worldwide pandemic going on. But if you look at some people, maybe if you had never given this a thought and you were not prepared for this and you had you know, no idea, that's gonna be more of a crisis for that person to go through than for other people who are like, you know what, there's something around the corner. There's, it, whether it's the next antibiotic resistant bacteria or the next super bug or virus or some sort of a you know, different environmental toxin, there's something coming that's going to create a crisis, a worldwide pandemic, and we're probably gonna see more and more of this kind of thing as time goes on. Now, the difference in those two levels of expectation is gonna be directly proportionate to the level of crisis that that person is in. So I'm not at all saying that you could have potentially had a mindset and then all of a sudden what we're going through right now is that no way, shape, or form a crisis, but I'm saying if you are aware of your expectations and take that one step further, instead of just trying to lower your expectations, if you actually declare, just think about it and say, what are you not expecting to happen? There's a lot of power in that. There's a lot of power in that for you to be able to just go into life and just experience it for, for whatever it is. So maybe, maybe an example that's a little bit more close to you is a vacation or a, a meeting at work. If you go into that vacation or that meeting at work thinking, oh, this is gonna be the best vacation ever, I'm so excited, I'm gonna do this, 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 and this, no matter what, you're setting yourself up for 
unmet expectations, a level of crisis, something like that. Because our vacations are never exactly what we expect them to be. Life is never exactly what we expect them to be. So all expectations are going to be, in, excuse me, incorrect at some level. Now, if you go into that vacation and say, you know what, I'm not expecting this to be the best vacation I've ever had, and just leave it at that, but hope. You, there's nothing wrong with hoping and desiring, and I, hey, I hope it's the best vacation, but I'm not expecting it to be the best vacation ever. You go into that vacation, you just experience it. And however good, bad, or otherwise, you don't even have to analyze how good, bad, or otherwise the vacation is. You just experience it, and you don't set yourself up for disappointment. Or the same thing with a work meeting or some sort of presentation. You expect to go off without a hitch. Well, that's just unrealistic, right? Things happen. Sure, hope that it goes off without a hitch. Hope that you have the best presentation ever and that all your coworkers respond well to it, but don't go into it expecting it. So what I'm saying here to recap is, instead of just trying to lower your expectations or just be aware of them to begin with, try this. Just try saying, I'm not expecting X to happen, and you pick something that's ridiculous or unreasonable, and it will impact your neurology. So that when you go and watch that next movie and you say, hey, I'm not expecting this to be the best movie I've ever seen, you watch it and I bet you have a, a higher level of enjoyment. Or if it's a horrible movie, you're not just distraught and feel like I just wasted 10 bucks on a movie or whatever it may be. Tie that into current events is, hey, what are you expecting around the corner? Are you expecting that we get through this coronavirus and then nothing else happens and there's no other issues, there's no other worldwide pandemics or crisis or things like that? I would caution you against that. Instead, I would say, hey, I don't expect there to never be something like this in the future. And then, well, what can I do to prepare for it? What can I do to armor myself up, my, my family up, to just be prepared for whatever it is, whether it's a bacteria, whether it's 5G, whether it's something we haven't even thought about, nuclear attack, who knows what? Well, what we can do is we can build health from within. And that's the second point, is that you have much more control over your health and how your body repairs itself and how you live than you've ever been told or ever believed. It's more than I can believe right now. If you wanna look into it more, um, look up epigenetics and uh, Bruce Lipton. He's proven, stem cell biologist, he's proven how your thoughts influence your genetics and how your body repairs and grows and whether you have disease or not at a high, high level. So it's no longer this, this card we can just play and say, well, my dad had heart disease, so I'm gonna have heart disease. Well, if you believe it, you, there you have a greater chance of having it. I'm gonna leave it at that. So two things is try, try having some non-expectations, right? Just, and, and just get those unrealistic things out of your head and then just experience life. See how that happens and then respond. Let us know how that works for you. And secondly, Give some thought to what you're doing to prepare for that next pandemic, that next crisis, the, the, the relapse of coronavirus in the fall, or the next antibiotic resistant bacteria. That one frightens me because we don't even have anything that can really combat that because we've already used our medications to try to combat bacteria and now we've created a problem. So that's, that's a scary one too. Um, so just give that some thought, think about it. Um, if you've got some comments or questions or you know, just respond to us, you can, you can contact us through call, email, um, text or go ahead and like the Facebook page. Um, not only like it, but also follow it. If you follow it, you'll be sure to get get our notifications and uh, get these updates and then stay, stay in touch. Have a blessed day.